Okay, Shiri Appleby, let's start with the big news of the week. Season yeah. three is coming back in early 2018, and usually it's a summer show. And what do you guys think of the big move to holding it later uh, in the year? I mean, I think it's probably going to be better for the show that we'll have another show to be paired with. So hopefully it'll be bring success to both of us. But I think the show does really well in the summer because it's like such a guilty pleasure. But hopefully our fans will stick with us. It's a really great season. I've seen half the season already, and I just know it's you know it turned out really great. I'm really happy with it. So you're all done filming it, right? All done filming it. I've been on vacation. I'm relaxed. It feels like a distant memory already. Um, yesterday, I saw you at this this really awesome um, Malibu wine event that Lifetime put on for the show. There right. was wild giraffes and like buffalo and wine tasting. It was really really fun. I'm, I'm sad everyone couldn't have been there. But what did you take from that uh, experience? I mean it was just really great to be surrounded with people that have like seen the show. They're so supportive. The like atmosphere was great. Part of you sort of felt like you were on the bachelor yourself. Yeah. And I have to say after three seasons, what I've learned most from making this show is that the concept of the bachelor actually works. That if you put all of these people together and film them, people are going to fall in love. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought yesterday was really great. It had a really nice vibe. Didn't you? Oh yeah, it was great. And uh, on this uh, this tour, they took us on the safari tour. The the lady actually said, you know, some some seasons of The Bachelor have filmed here, so it felt very very appropriate that we were there. I thought so too. I thought so too. Going back to the very beginning, what was it about this character of Rachel that that really just stuck with you? What made you want to play her? Um, well, initially, I really just found her to be a complicated, a complicated character. I mean, she has these ideals and, and morals and beliefs about herself that she thinks she's a good person, that she really believes in fair rights for everybody, and yet her job is in complete opposition of that. Like her job is basically to like tear people down and make them feel horrible about themselves. So I knew that there'd be a really rich layer to play. Um, I didn't realize how deep and dark the characters' issues were, and I didn't realize how much I was actually taking on. I think, you know, the first season, everyone was asking me, like, wow, you're like, you just suffered a breakdown on TV. Did that, like, have any effect on you? And I, was, I think what was riding high on the fact that, like, we had made the show, I was surprised that it, like, done so well, that it didn't really have an effect. And then after the second season of having a breakdown again, um, I came home from that second season and I was like, this really is a much more complicated and harder part to play than I had ever realized it. By the end of the second season, it took me like months to sort of recuperate from going on that character's journey. Hmm. Yeah, because on the surface, if, if people haven't seen it, what they may know about the show is that it takes place, you know, behind the scenes of a reality show. But it's really about this this character that you play and, and Quinn played by, by Constance Zimmer and the relationship you guys have is really the, the meat of the show. It's my favorite part of the show, whenever you guys are battling in a scene together. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, yeah, it really is. And like when Constance and I first worked together, um, I was really clear. I was like, these women don't really have like romantic loves. Like they're not, not open, vulnerable, soft women with men in that way. And I really identify the fact that these two women, like their romance was going to be with each other. And so that was really interesting, like, you know, because you rarely see women in work in these, like, dark, hard situations. And, like, how does your mentor become the person you love, but you also the person you hate? Um, and how do, you know, what you believe and, like, ho who you hope to be, if that's in total contrast to, like, what your job is, how does that have an effect on who you are? And is it worth it to go through with it? Um, in the name of success. So it's been a really interesting character to play, but definitely a lot harder and, and more challenging than I had ever really assumed when we first made it. Speaking of challenging, you actually directed an episode last year. Mm -hmm. What was it like stepping behind the camera after you know starting on the show for two years? You actually are the one calling the shots. It was awesome. I mean, uh, so since I did this TV show, about eight years ago called Life Unexpected, I really made a conscious effort to do the work to be prepared to get behind the camera. So I shadowed on Franklin and Bash, 90210, and then I, I shadowed on Girls. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I had really done all of the research, and especially watching Lena Dunham direct herself, really gave me like, I really had the experience of watching somebody else do that. So by the time I, um, got my opportunity, like my chance at bat, I was just really ready to go. 
in the sense that like obviously saying action for the first time and like getting through your first day and making your shot list there's such you know that such nerves it's like going to high school for the first day of like in ninth grade but by the end of it i had felt like so prepared for the moment i felt really proud of myself obviously you watch it and like a week later you're like oh i wish i had done this differently and a year later you're like wow i can see the inexperience i had there and so i directed my second episode this year and I could see my growth, but at the same time now I'm like, I can see how I can even continue to grow with more opportunity. But I think, you know, that's all really what life is about is, you know, having aspirations and having dreams and giving yourself the opportunity to show yourself whether or not you're capable of success. Mm. So hopefully, you know, I hope to keep it going. I talked to Constance on, on a web chat like this a couple weeks ago, and she told me that she directed an episode in season three. Yeah. Um, what kind of a director is Constance Zimmer? Well, Constance Zimmer, I don't know if people know this about her, but Constance Zimmer as an actress is obsessed with props. <laughs> like really obsessed with props, which is awesome. It's just totally different. And so I was actually excited to work with her as a director to see like, what is this obsession with props all about? And how is that gonna affect my performance differently? Um, and it was awesome. I mean, she's definitely very meticulous and knows what she wants. and. I felt like she had a really good sense of actually a blocking. Like she had a way of putting scenes up on their feet um, that brought scenes to life in ways that I hadn't I hadn't thought that they would be um, that they would be brought to life in ways that other directors hadn't done it. I thought she was awesome, and also it's like fun to be directed by your best friend. You're so open to the experience, and I only want her to succeed. So it was great. And for the upcoming third season, there's the new showrunner, Stacy. What does she bring to the show? I know she was a writer on, on previous seasons. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's interesting is that we shoot the show in Los Angeles. and We shoot the show in Vancouver, and the writers are in Los Angeles. So I think the thing that Stacy did, you know, the best that we've had so far is there was a constant stream of communication. Mm -hmm. And she was really open to hearing the way that, you know, I really prep each episode. I, like, go go through page one, page turn with like an acting coach. And I really try to beat out like the emotional arc of this character because it's such a heavy one. And so Stacy was really open to me being like, in this moment, I really think we should adjust this. And I think the character's feeling this. And, you know, I want to make the scene deeper in this way. So she was just really open. And I think she was also really focused on how do we bring more of what worked into season one into season three, which is more of those quieter moments with the characters where we can get in deeper with them. Um, and honestly, I just, I was really interested in the thesis of the show this year, which is like, can a successful woman actually attract a man? So, uh, it was a topic that I was interested in and, um, I thought it was, I thought it, it lent itself to a lot of really good story. I think it's so important, especially, you know, in the, in the wonder, wonder woman world that we all live in to have a show with a strong lead and a strong female showrunner too. And, and the season you mentioned, the the, the female sutras played by Kate, Caitlin Fitzgerald. Um, I'm very excited to see what you guys do with, with this big twist. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, talk about that. We have three female leads. The show is basically being led by me, Constance, and now Caitlin this season. And I, know, I think that's pretty unheard of. And um, it really has a feminist hook to it. You know, the first handful of episodes are discussing whether or not this strong woman is attractive to these men, like a woman that can like beat them all at everything. And then my character goes really dark into uncovering like why she is the way she is. At the end of the second season, we realized that she was raped and she does a lot of confronting and, you know, standing up for herself and saying like, I deserve more and I'm capable and better of more. I think it's a very feminist thing to do is to say, I know who I am and I'm going to take on the world. So this, these, the season really has this very strong female point of view. Hmm. And <laughs> your character has, has had a few leaders herself over the years. There was a Jeremy and there was Adam and Coleman. What, from the, from the fan perspective, who do you think the fans want, want Rachel to end up with? Or is there somebody that we haven't, you know, really seen yet? Is Rachel's dream man still out there somewhere? I'm having trouble hearing you now. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, now I can, perfect. So sorry. Um, I don't think we've met Rachel's dream man yet. I don't think we've met her match yet. I think she has been more focused on figuring out who she is, which I think is a really important thing to do before you sort of pair up with somebody. 
Um, so I'll be curious, you know, hopefully the show will get another season and hopefully somebody new and exciting will come into the picture. When fans stop you on the street to talk about the show, what do they most want to talk to you about in, in terms of, of, of Rachel, of this fantastic character that you play, Rachel? Oh, thank you. I mean, I think a lot of people feel a lot of empathy for this character. And I think it's a very human thing to be, you know, trapped in a world where you feel one thing, but the world is expecting something different of you. So I think she's a character that a lot of women can relate to. Um, and I think mostly when people do mention the show, I just think people really enjoy watching it. It's a really fun show with a ton of heart and it's dark. Um, and there's such a fascination with The Bachelor and so people are actually being able to see how that show is made. And I think that's the thing that people always ask of me, especially because I play the producer, is that really what goes on? Hmm. Kind of seems like it is, you know? That's my, I think that's one of my favorite parts of the show is seeing the manipulation because I'm a huge reality fan. I love um, Survivor and Amazing Race and all of that. You know, American Idol is coming back. And so it's just really, really interesting to get the inside look. And it's, are you a fan of, of the reality show? I, I mean, I, I definitely am. I mean, I was a huge fan of Project Runway. I was actually talking about newlyweds the other day. Um, I, real world, I mean, the real world, yeah. Rose Bowl's challenge for a season. I know I'm dating myself, but like Kit and Mark, some of my favorite reality show um, contestants. I'm fascinated by it. I think it's really fun. It's definitely a guilty pleasure. But there is, like, those are my favorite scenes to play because it really shows, like, how dark and dirty this world is and how people just get trapped. And I think if you're not smart enough to play the game, the game plays you. Well, we love talking about awards here at Gold Derby, and you did get a Critics' Choice Award nomination, uh, I think, last year. What mm -hmm. was what was your reaction to get, to get uh, the notice like that from TV critics? I mean, it was like one of those pinch you moments, you know, I've been in this business since I was a young kid and you kind of think that it's like one of those things you always sort of fantasize about and you hope it would happen. And the fact that it did, especially on a show that, you know, it was really this, this dark horse, nobody was paying attention to it. And to get that acclaim and that notice really it was such a, a, a boost of self-esteem and confidence that like, I know what I'm doing and, and people are giving you a nice pat on the back. And I think, you know, nominations, not nominations. It's a show that people within the industry and in the world are like watching and respecting. And that just feels really incredible. Mm -hmm. It's kind of uh, a new era for Lifetime that Unreal has, has kind of championed along the way. Because yeah. Lifetime is in the Emmy conversation. It got two Emmy nominations last year. Right. What, what's, what was that like when it wasn't just Constance got nominated, but the show got up for, for best writing? That must have been yeah. so cool. It's wild, and you're like, I acted that. Like, <laughs> that thing, that one best, right, like, it didn't act itself, you know? So it's just a pat on the back for all of you that you're like, we've been spending four months in, like, these concrete boxes, and people are respecting what we've done. It just feels awesome. Now, if, I don't want to jinx anything, but if you yeah. do get a nomination this year at the Emmys, you'll have to pick an episode to oh. try to submit to the judges. Is there a really strong Rachel episode in season two that you could, that you would think, I think that would be a good one for me. I think, um, and, you know, I, I think there was an episode actually, I wasn't supposed to direct it, but the episode that I actually directed is where she starts to have the breakdown when she goes on the hometown dates and she's just starting to spiral and she freaks out with Coleman and she's like, you're making me feel crazy. And I was really like losing my mind and I shot the scene from like both sides, both angles and I thought it was just an episode where you really got to see and feel Rachel unravel. And that's a really challenging thing to communicate because as an actor, you actually do have to unravel yourself. Um, and I, I think it was a really, I was really, I was just really proud of the way it came together. Mm -hmm. Well, final question here. I love asking this. What, what shows do you watch in your free time? Like what's on your uh, DVR? Sure. So lately I've been watching uh, the new seasons of Masters of None. I've been checking out Hands Me Tail. I've watched Big Little Lies. I'm really trying to like dabble in a lot of things. We've been watching a lot of Miss Julie's Green Room in my house. I don't know if you watched that, but that's Julie Andrews show with uh, teaching young kids about behind the scenes of the theater. Um, but I mean, yeah, what else have I been watching? The final season of Girls was awesome. I just try to, I'm really trying to sample everything, 13 Reasons Why. 
Yeah, it's a big mix of comedies and dramas and specials. It's cool. Yeah, I just really, there's so much out there and so many people are doing so many great things. I just really want to feel inspired by everybody and sort of, you know, you kind of take it and put it into your arsenal of creativity so that the next time you're in front of the camera, those people's performances, oh my goodness, Gillian Jacobs on Love, the new season was just perfection, I thought. Hmm. Well, Sherry, it was great to talk to you today. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see you after the the big wine event yesterday. Ooh. So if, if, uh, if I hope to see you on the Emmy red carpet in a couple months here. Fingers crossed for you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.